For over 2,000 years, the linen relic, believed to be the burial shroud of Jesus of Nazareth, has been traced across empires through history. It wasn't until 1898 when a remarkable discovery was made, when the linen shroud was photographed for the first time. The negative of the photograph revealed the image of a man with a clear, impressive and majestic countenance. It was Jesus of Nazareth. In April 2010, the city of Turin became the center of world attention. The 2,000-year-old shroud, which is now commonly known as the Shroud of Turin, was exhibited after 10 years at the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin. Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmad, Khalifatul Masih V, head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community, visited Turin to see the Holy Shroud during his tour of Europe. It was the first time in the history of the Ahmadiyya community that the Khalifa was going to view the Holy Shroud of Jesus. Upon reaching the cathedral, His Holiness was greeted by Monsignor Giuseppe Giabati, President of the Turin Archdiocese Commission on the Shroud. He gave a brief introduction to the Shroud and then took His Holiness to the Royal Chapel where the relic is exhibited on an altar in a large glass case. Measuring approximately 4.5 meters by 1 meter, the linen shroud has a faint yet distinctive yellowish image of a front and back view of a man with his hands folded. The two views are aligned along the mid-plane of the body and point in opposite directions. For Ahmadi Muslims, the shroud of Turin is potentially a key piece of evidence to prove that Jesus Christ survived the crucifixion. There have been several scholars and scientists who have come to the conclusion that the man wrapped in the Shroud of Turin had survived the crucifixion. The anatomical accuracy of the blood flows and injuries have astounded researchers and made it even harder for people to believe it a work of a forger, especially because the photographic image of a negative character that it bears was already impressed on it many centuries before the difference between negative and positive was discovered. Another proof of the Shroud's authenticity is the remarkable resemblance between the biblical accounts of the events of the crucifixion and the impressions on the Shroud. So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Large trickles of blood can be seen around the forehead and scalp which resulted from the thorns that were placed on his head. The hands were not pierced through the palms, as usually depicted in medieval art, but through the wrists, the only suitable place to support the weight of a body. Another remarkable fact is that the hand shows only four fingers as the thumb bends brusquely. According to medical experts, this was a direct result of a nail in the wrist and is consistent with this trauma. But when they came to Jesus and found him already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. According to the Gospel of John, the image in the shroud shows neither of the legs being fractured as they are seen intact. There are, however, scores of linear wounds on the torso and legs. These wounds are consistent with the distinctive dumbbell wounds of a Roman flagrum. There are also large puncture wounds in the feet as if pierced by a single spike. The large blood stain on the chest is also consistent with biblical descriptions. The heart's activity is sufficiently proved by the bleeding. This is a critical piece of evidence of his survival. Streams of blood can be seen down both arms. The blood drippings from the main flow occurred in response to gravity at an angle that would occur during crucifixion. There are two dark parallel lines caused by the fire of 1532 in the Saint-Chapelle of Chamolis in France, 
where the shroud was kept. These lines run lengthways and are intersected by 29 roughly triangular holes surrounded by scorch marks. In addition, there are marks left by the water used to put out the fire in 1532 and on other occasions. Another proof linking the shroud to Jesus are the test on the pollens identified on the shroud, confirming the supposition that it has passed through the regions of Palestine and the Middle East. The studies and scientific research that have been carried out on the shroud for nearly a century prove that the warmth of the body, in conjunction with other chemico-physical reactions due to the aloe impregnation, produce a negative imprint of the body. The snapshot which has preserved the details of Jesus' crucifixion for posterity. The imprints on the shroud not only bear the image of a man who appears to have suffered physical trauma in a manner consistent with crucifixion, but also consistent with the biblical accounts of the torture of Jesus. After the viewing, the director took his holiness to the cathedral and onto the library. His Holiness was introduced to their resident expert on Islamic knowledge. His Holiness was asked various questions, including questions on his trip to view the Shroud. His Holiness was greeted most courteously, and conversation ensued. He told them the visit was spontaneously planned when His Holiness came to know of the exhibition. He told them that we definitely consider this cloth to belong to Jesus, peace be on him. We believe when the Jews wanted to crucify Jesus, God saved him, and the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has proved this in his book, Jesus in India, that Jesus survived the cross, and this cloth is not a testimony of his death, rather it is a testimony of his staying alive, escaping death on the cross, therefore it is a blessed cloth. His Holiness was asked if he too considered that Jesus had passed away in Kashmir. His Holiness explained that he was indeed the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be on him, who had proven this. His Holiness told them he considered it his good fortune that he could see the burial cloth. They mentioned the suffering of Jesus, and His Holiness told them that the prophets of God endured much hardship. In this age, the promised Messiah, too, endured suffering. He prayed that, may the Christian world accept that the Turin Shroud is in fact a proof of a miraculous sign of Jesus escaping death on the cross. This was an historic event, not just in the history of Ahmadiyyat, but in the history of the modern world. This was the representative of the promised Messiah of latter days, observing the shroud that was used to cover the body of Jesus, son of Mary. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih V is the spiritual successor to the promised Messiah, who was prophesied to appear in the likeness of and with the spirit of Jesus. It is not Jesus who would return in his own body, but rather 
that someone would appear in his likeness. That was the promised Messiah. Indeed, it was the promised Messiah who made the claim that Jesus had survived the crucifixion and travelled across the Middle East to Kashmir in India in order to complete his divine mission of preaching the word of God to the lost tribes of the house of Israel. Analysis of the Shroud confirms these claims of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, on whom be peace, and is a testament to the truth of Ahmadiyyat. As such, it was truly an historic and blessed occasion that saw the representative and Khalifa of the Messiah of latter days observe and examine the Shroud belonging to Jesus, son of Mary, who had appeared some two thousand years earlier.